Hi there, popping in to tell you a little bit about a project that a patron of mine is starting and I'm here to tell you all about it. It's called DM Saving Throw and it is a live play, Twitch stream and actual play podcast. I think they started it in late May and I think the first two or three episodes will already be up, but if you wanna catch them live, they will be streaming weekly on Tuesdays between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. EST. Or if you would rather listen to the podcast, it is available on every podcast app. Also, they wanted me to mention that it is adult only because there was some brothel shenanigans. I will leave all the applicable links to check them out down below in the description box. Thank you so much, Perry, for becoming a $10 patron. I truly appreciate your support. And if anyone watching has a project that they want me to give a personal shout out to, you too can become a $10 patron. Again, that is DM Saving Throw available on Twitch and on all podcasting platforms. So be sure to check it out. I know I will be because your girl loves her Dungeons and Dragons podcast, just saying. Back to the video. Am I an insane person for drinking hot coffee in a heat wave? Oh God, it feels so wrong. It feels so very wrong. Hi friends. We are currently in the middle of a heat wave. It is mercifully 10 degrees cooler than it was on the weekend. However, in this room currently with these lights on me, it's hot. It's really hot. This is going to be a noisy video. I have two fans pointed at me. Plus the window is open. This is one of those times where I'm gonna sacrifice clean audio for the health and safety of myself in this tiny room that has no central air. We don't usually get these temperatures in the Pacific Northwest. So a lot of our houses and condos and apartments aren't equipped with any sort of air conditioning because usually we don't need it. Hopefully it doesn't get any hotter than this moving forward because I honestly do not know how I will be able to film. Also, if you didn't know, the studio is right over top of a train yard. So I hope you guys can forgive me because I still wanted to film, even if it was going to be a little noisy and a little hot. We make sacrifices, we make do. So today we are going to be moving forward with the Rococo series, but for today's video format, it is going to be using the same eyeshadows in two different styles. I did this in my last palette potential series. I will link that video up here. I think it's a really good way of showcasing the versatility of these shades. In any case, I really enjoyed the last one. So that's what we're gonna do today. And I think we should just jump on in before my face melts completely off. If that sounds like fun to you, then please keep on watching, stay hydrated, and let's get started. She's holding it together, folks. It's like trying to ignore the fact that I'm feeling slightly lightheaded. So the colors that are really speaking to me right now is kind of these six pans of matte eyeshadow. I kind of didn't realize that these dark matte shades here kind of had corresponding transition shades. I kind of didn't notice that at the beginning, but now that I'm seeing it, I can't unsee it. Also, this is a shade that we haven't dipped into yet. Frivolity. I feel like for this first look, I'm going to play. And for the second one, I'll plan it out a little bit more. But for today, we're just keeping it freewheeling and fancy free. Also, one of my subscribers actually pointed out that they didn't think that this was set up in quads. They thought it was set up in rows. There's a cool toned row, a pinky purple row, orange peach row, and a neutral gold row up top. Okay, we are having a dodgy eye primer day and we're gonna have to try and just work through it. So the colors look really good in this arrangement. Like it does go from warmest to coolest in a gradient. I think that's what we're gonna do anyway. Let's start with the greens on the inner corner, move into the pinks, and then have the orange on the end. Let's start it off with Madame in the inner third. And we're placing the more pastel shades higher up in the crease because they are the transition shades. That is real pretty, real pretty, can confirm. On the center of the crease, let's dip into infatuation. I love baby pinks. These are so fun. And then let's transition out of that into Magdalene. Let's start dipping into these deeper shades, starting with Grandeur. That packs really, really well. Let's see what happens now when we put Romance on the lid. I hope it doesn't turn into mud. I 
if I'm loving this yet, all matte, but let's attempt throwing down allegory on the outer third. I kind of want to see what it would look like with a sheer metallic all over the lid though. Just kind of glazed over top of all those colors to smooth them out a bit, just to kind of mask these funky transitions happening. So I'm going to try and just go into my finger on top of these shadows with frivolity. I'm going to see what it looks like in the center first. Yeah, it's pretty though. Subtle. A little too subtle. I want it subtle, but not that subtle. Let's do a little bit of glitter primer then. Yeah, okay, I'm kind of digging that. Now I'm just trying to take that same shimmer shade and tapping it over the edges just to diffuse that shimmer nice and soft and let it radiate out just a little bit onto the rest of the look. Now to tackle the lower lash line, which I, oh, I have no idea. Let's start with Romance, the dark eggplant shade. And I think I want to switch positions on the lower lash line between the green and the orange. I don't know why. I just think it would balance well, but we'll see. You know what I kind of wish I did instead was eliminate the orange altogether and just use the green, the pink, and the purple. Can I do this? Can I backtrack enough? Let's see if I can do this. Okay, this little corner is gonna look a little crazy. Let's start off by grabbing Grandeur, getting that onto the outer corner. Okay, let's go into Madame next to blend that out. Dip back into Romance. And again into Infatuation. Taking a little bit of pressed powder, trying to blend all that together. Taking my bronzer brush and just giving that a little zhuzh. Not entirely happy with this intersection, but these colors do look really nice together. I don't even really hate the way that they blend together. They're kind of opposite ends of the color wheel, but also at the same time not because it's not a true green and it's not a true red. The green and the purple both have enough blue in them that I think I can kind of get away with this. Let's finish off the lower lash line. Grandeur is such a pretty deep teal. A little bit of infatuation to blend out that purple on the bottom and a little bit of Madame to blend out this little edge here. This is such a roundabout way of creating a halo, but we made it. And then I'm tapping back into frivolity again, just to speckle the rest of this look with that hint of sparkle. I'm really glad I took the orange out. I think that was the right move for sure. I think this is going to come together with lashes and with the rest of the look. And if we use the right lip and the right highlighter, I think, I think this is gonna work. I think we'll work it out. Why don't I go do all this on the other side, throw on the lashes, and then we come back and we try and put this all together. <laughs> all right, other side is done. Lashes are on. These are next level by Bold Face. <sighs> okay, so that took way less time on the other side, obviously, because I knew what I was doing. Also might look a little bit more blended, a little bit cleaner. And I think honestly, it really came together once I finished it up and threw on some lashes. I think this look is actually quite interesting. Through a couple of things in the waterline, one of them being the NYX retractable eyeliner in aqua green, and also the ColourPop creme gel liner in Trick or Treat from the Hocus Pocus collection. All right, blush time. I really want to pop out more of that bright pink, so I think I'll start off by trying to blend in just a titch of the Love Blush from Hank and Henry. I'm going to try and be quite careful with it because it is a cream to powder sort of formula, so I think I will try picking it up on a small brush and trying to blend it very lightly into the skin. And just like that, the look got so 80s. This is a really interesting formula of blush because it does work under powder and it also works over top of powder. It's neither a cream nor is it a powder. It's kind of 
both. I think I've said this once before, but my partner and I have been watching a lot of The Muppet Show. We've been kind of working through it. Some of the makeup on that show for the women was everything. Just the most blush you could possibly imagine, then times it by three. There was no contouring happening, it was just blush. You contoured with blush and it was kind of a moment. And me a blush, oh, I almost forgot, who am I? Let's just take a little bit of this, a little bit of that for some glow. To go with the rose gold tone of frivolity, I think I'll go in with Master Chrome Molten Rose Gold. So stunning every time. I always forget that it's here because it's so old, but it's just so beautiful. For lips, I don't want to match. I think that would be too much. I think we should go with something a little bit more neutral. Let's start with House Labs Rip Lip Liner in Rule. To top that off, let's use a classic. This is Fenty's Gloss Bomb in the shade Fussy. Need to escape the fans. All right, good enough. All right, folks, that is the first look in this video all done. It's already so hot in here that I can barely stand it. But this look definitely took a bit of a journey. I'm kind of digging it. I don't know, I wanna know your thoughts. Is this too out there? Do these colors look too muddy together? I kind of like that the blend between the two colors is almost muddy in a good way. Like they blend together enough that I think I can get away with it. I'm glad I eliminated the orange out of this look. I think that was the right move. This is a lot cleaner. I am in love with this quad. I think these colors are outstanding together and I cannot wait to dive back into them for the second look of this video. I think for the next look, I wanna try and showcase the colors a little bit more as opposed to just making kind of a giant artful mess. So that's the plan for the next look and it'll be coming at you right. It is too hot for this joke. I need to get out of here right now. <laughs> Temperatures inside are a bit more manageable today. Right now I have the window closed and the fan on. And so hopefully it is not as noisy as it was last time. I feel like this video is just so chaotic already. It doesn't even matter, but anyway. All right, the second look of this video, I am hoping to give off a little bit more of a glam rock kind of vibe. Just something a little removed from the more avant-garde style that came out of the first look, which was a little unplanned, but for this look, I really want to showcase romance and infatuation. I thought they were beautiful and I just didn't get to see enough of them. Why don't I just zoom you on in and we can get started. I'm just going to turn off the fan real quick so I can throw on my primer. Fan was making that very difficult last time. Also, my mother is home from work today. She told me that she took this day off like a week ago and of course I probably forgot. So if you hear any noises in the background that aren't the train yard downstairs, the drilling upstairs, or the the monotonous drone of the fans, that's mom. I'm gonna start by placing infatuation on the outer third, winging up and out. I just really wanted to see this little pastel pink a bit more. We just didn't get to work with it as much as I would have liked. I just wanted to see how much I could get out of it as far as pigmentation goes, because it is quite light. I'd say it's a little fairer than the pinks that I've used from Give Me Glow from the Vintage Rose and the Vivid Rose palettes. Both of those palettes have a soft baby pink in them or pastel pink. And I'm pretty sure those ones packed just a little bit more punch than this one does. Let's move into romance here. I'm going to smudge that into the outer third of the upper lash line on an angle. And then I'm gonna carve out the crease. and then try and blend it up into the pink. I'm gonna take this down on the outer portion of the lower lash line to connect that. Just gonna bring infatuation back in to blend out the top edge. I think I took this a little bit too far in. I kind of want to make the angle 
cut off just a little bit more this way. So I think I will fix that when I go in and cut the crease. All right, let's cut this crease out. A little bit of glitter primer. I don't want to go too high over the shadow that I just laid down because I, I like the shape. I don't want to make it any bigger. I kind of like how narrow it is because it kind of gives the look a bit more of an edge as opposed to looking more doe-eyed. And then let's try and fix this line here. Kinda like that, even though you probably cannot see that very well. Okay, let's first go into frivolity. All right, now I need to clean up this edge a bit. Let's go in with romance first. Not a big fan of what it's doing with the glue. I don't like how that's reacting. So I'm just gonna take Frivolity and try and camouflage that with the metallic. I've never seen the glitter primer react that way to a shadow. I wanna take a little bit of infatuation over where these two meet. Oh, that is just such a mess. Time to bring out the alcohol and not the fun kind. I would not recommend putting 99% alcohol near your eye, but if you must, don't open your eye until it is fully dried. If it's not and you get it into your eye, that'd be a bad time for you. Just tapping on a little bit more eyeshadow primer. Back into romance. Let's start building that back up in this area. Packing okay over that area, it's not perfect, but I think from far away, it should be fine. Back into infatuation, just to try and blend this out. I'm almost afraid that infatuation, that light pink, might be too light to blend into this shape. I don't know. I mean, what would happen if I just threw down grandeur? there. Like what if I just threw down a little stripe of the dark green? All right, let's see what happens. Okay, back into romance. And then let's take some Madame on this edge here. All right, and then back into frivolity. And then kind of to wrap it up, I want to take Madame and work that into the inner part of the lower lash line. And then deepening the inner corner with grandeur. I think I'm finally at a place where I can call it good. The left eye is gonna have to go into therapy after all the trauma I've caused it, but that's okay. A uh, lash line. I want it to be teal -y green to match the green in here. Then let's use black flame candle to start off with. On top of that, I will layer the NYX retractable eyeliner in aqua green. Okay, I think I'm just going to leave that for now, go work on the other eye. I think once lashes on, it'll look way cooler than it looks right now. Cause right now it looks like a bit of a mess, but I believe that it will come together. So why don't I go do this on the other side, put on my lashes and then when we come back, we will see if I was right. Other side is done, lashes are on. These are Alter Ego by Boldface. Big enough to hide all of my mistakes. Obviously the other side went a lot more smoothly. Not as much layering and then weird dark spots and textures. I think most of my photos will be taken from this side today. There's been this trend going around where people are really shading their inner corners quite darkly. And I think this is kind of in line with that trend. I don't know what possesses me to put colors together that just don't want to go together, but I've always really liked reds and greens together. And I guess teals and purples are kind of in that same spectrum. Let's move on to some blush. I might use the same blush as yesterday. It is a really good match once it's diffused out for that pink 
eyeshadow. So I think I'll just start that up here. I feel like both of these looks have been incredibly 80s. I think these colors just lend themselves to a bit of an 80s motif. So I'm just kind of leaning into it at this point. Like, you know what these colors are. You know, you know the, you know the print. So I guess we do know that these colors do in fact go together. And I'm keeping this blush pretty high on the temples and not taking it too far into the center of the face. I was gonna add a darker blush, but now I'm not so sure. I really like this blush application method of using a big fluffy eyeshadow brush as opposed to a blush brush. It's kind of nice to be able to pinpoint the blush where you want it. Okay, I think that's all the blush I want to do, which to a normal person is already way too much. But if you've been here long enough, you know that this is me showing restraint. I've been using this a lot, but it is a solid move when it comes to ambient blushes. I'm going to tap into the lighter side here and that's going on to the apple of the cheek. This will pick up some of those rose gold tones again. So I think we need to keep that incorporated into the rest of the face. Isn't that gorgeous? Highlight, I am kind of Natalie Imbruglia on this one. I really loved Molten Rose Gold. I think it picked up that shimmer shade really, really well. So I think I might just go with that again because it's just too good of a match to go with something else. Do I want this on the brow bone? I kind of do just to add something there. Yeah. We are on the home stretch. All that's left to do is a lip. I don't really feel like doing a dark lip because it's summer and although this is very glam rock, I, I just, I feel like it would weigh everything down. The look is already really intense. Sometimes that's great, but sometimes it's just too much. The other part of me thinks it would look really cool to have like a really light, light nude. Yeah, like this guy right here. I don't know. I think there's just something really cool about that. Let's start with a bit of nude truffle. Give this a shake because it's looking a little separated. I bought this at Winners like two years ago. Probably past its prime actually. I probably shouldn't be using it. Plus I'm pretty sure Bite Beauty is like a clean beauty brand which means that they probably don't have a whole lot of preservatives in the formula. Yeah, that's a pretty badass combo. I think all that's left to do is to spray down and we'll call it a day. All right, and I believe that that is the second look in this video all complete. I wanna know which look you preferred because honestly, at this point, neither of them are my favorite. It's kind of like choosing the lesser of two evils. I think if I was going to go out afterwards, I think I would choose this one. I feel like this one just has a little bit of a better flow to it, but it's still a bit messy, but at least this look has structure to it, which I think grounds it a little bit more in reality. These colors are fantastic. Fantastic. I can see why they put them side by side because they honestly look really beautiful together. Putting them together in a look is another thing entirely. And of course, like once I decided on this color scheme, I had to kind of double down and just be stubborn and dig my heels in because honestly, if I had the time to backtrack a little bit, maybe I would have incorporated these colors into other looks that maybe were a bit more complimentary, but you'll have to let me know which one you like better. I did stop into Sephora on my way home with the other look. There was three Sephora employees who stopped me and wanted to look at my eyeshadow because they thought it was great. So that was encouraging. I guess the next video in the series will be the final one. We will do a basic to bold. Before that video though, I think I'm going to have a little brief interlude. I'm going to take a break from this for a week and film something else, but it's fun. It's going to be a try on of a bunch of new to me products. So I don't think you guys will mind. I think that's it for me. I'm going to head out, but before I do, please let me rattle off the spiel to you. Here are the many ways that you can help out my channel. You can give this video a huge thumbs up. You can comment down below what you thought of everything. You can subscribe. Any and all engagement with this video is crucial to its success in the algorithm. So if you have a few spare seconds, please engage with this video. You can follow me on other social media. I will leave those 
right there. If you wish to support me financially, I do have a Patreon. The link is down below in the description box, along with a bunch of petitions to sign and places to donate. I love how this coffee just turned into coffee flavored water by the end of this. It's very appetizing. And I guess that's everything. So with that, please stay safe, stay sane, wash your hands, wear a mask. Even though mandatory mask mandates are being lifted in a lot of places right now, I would strongly encourage you to keep using them, especially indoors. Get vaccinated if you can. Just keep doing your best and I will see you on the next one. Bye.